he can tackle. He, he's good off the edge. He sets the edge. He's very, very good. Um, and also, I think Nasir Adderley is a guy who, because he didn't play through most of the preseason, probably will factor in in a lot of ways on defense. You'll probably see him some on special teams. And my guess is you'll see him play a little bit of slot, play both safety spots, maybe play a little bit of nickel linebackers so they can move him around and create matchups and make him kind of fill some of those roles that Derwin filled last year. Uh, I mean, he's not Derwin James, but he can do some of the things that Derwin did, and he he's probably going to force a lot of turnovers for this team. And speaking of Mike Williams, because you look at a guy like Gordon, who's been a star, wants to get paid. Williams had 10 touchdowns last year. Going forward, because Phil Rivers obviously has doesn't have a lot of time left, do you foresee a possibly a similar situation contract-wise happening with Mike Williams if he has a breakout season? And arguably you look at a guy like Keenan Allen, who's been hurt and, yes, is productive, but if you look at a guy, he, he gets picked at seventh overall. He's seen as the future receiver of your team. Where do you see that might that might uh that uh come into play down the line? Uh I you know, I know the team loves Mike Williams and he's a guy who I think they'll take care of. They they obviously drafted him very highly. He's was a big part of the offense last year, might be a bigger part of the offense this year in some ways. And the Chargers, I know they have a reputation for being cheap and for not extending their players. But <laughs> Incredible. <it's, laughs> Antonio it's, Gates. It's, it's really not true, though. If you look at what they've done historically, and especially with Tom Telesco, a general manager, just look at the last couple of years. They gave Casey Hayward a big deal. They extended Corey Legit, even though that turned out to be a bad deal. They, um, they, you mentioned Keenan they extended. They just extended Mike Pouncey. You know, they have a lengthy history of finding to keep their guys, finding ways to keep their guys on the team and pay them what they're worth. So the idea that they don't take care of their players, I don't think is really true. You know, they tried to take care of Gordon. He just wanted more than they were comfortable paying Mm. and they were not comfortable coming off their number. So, and I think that's a reflection of the running back position and the way that position is being looked at uh, from an analytics standpoint teams are realizing that, you know, you don't really need the bell cow back to be successful. I think last year there was one running back that had 18 or more carries in 10 or more games. So the idea of the back that gets 300 carries and leads the way and gets all the touches, that's kind of going away. And I think you're going to start seeing more and more running back stables with three and four guys who all do different things. So I think that's just a reflection of how people are viewing the running game uh, the, the running back position, and, you know, Gordon's only been healthy for one full season in, out of his first four years in the league. So Sucks. there's that, too. So I, I think they'll find a way to, t- to, kick, to k- take care of Mike Williams. They have Hunter Henry coming up at the end of the offseason. Joey Bose is a free agent. Uh, uh, his, Joey Bose is going to be entering the fifth year of his deal uh, next year. So they're going to have to work, find a way to extend him. They've got to take care of Rivers. They've got to take care of um, uh, Des King. And there are several other players that need to be taken care of. So that they've got to find a way to fit all these guys in the cap. And there may be one or two guys that they just can't figure out a way to keep. But they're going to try. And they've always tried to take care of their guys. So I, I, don't, I think their reputation is a little bit unfair, to be honest with you. All right. So last, last question. I guess it's kind of two. But... F- First of all, how did the Chargers, you know, get past the Chiefs as the the king of the AFC West? One and two. How do the Chargers get love in San Diego again? Can they get love? How do they get love? Well, I'll answer the Chiefs question first. I think uh, the Chiefs question: How do they how do they overtake the Chiefs? I think this is a team that they're going to have a good offense, but I think this defense needs to take another step forward this year. Uh, yeah. They're going to have Ingram healthy. They're going to have Bosa healthy. They did a really good job of rebuilding the linebackers. They brought in um, Jerry Tillery as a, as a first-round pick. So they need that defensive line to step up, and they need the front seven in particular to be a step or two better than they were for most of, the, most of last season and really kind of 
choke off the running game and figure out a way to, to get after quarterbacks from the inside and and try to um, you know get that interior rush going to, to fluster Mahomes and, and try to track him down. So I think it's really important for the defense to lead the way against the Chiefs. Um, in terms of getting love in San Diego, I mean, are, are you asking how do they get back to San Diego or how how how, how do they? you know, get embraced again by that fan base at the level that they once were? Is it a matter of time? Is it a matter of winning? Is it just a matter of moving back there? Like, uh, I, you know, I think there are still a lot of people who love them, but just won't admit it. Yeah, um, no, definitely. But there are a lot of people who they've lost to that. I don't think they're going to get back whether they win mm. or not. I just think, you know, a lot of native San Diegans who grew up going to games, buying season tickets, you know, kind of tied their identity to those guys. They just felt like they got stabbed in the back, like the Chargers didn't really want to stay and they didn't really make any efforts to stay. And they just feel like the Chargers turned their backs on them. And I, I don't know that they'll get over that. So in terms of being loved the way they were in San Diego before, I, you know, I don't really know if that's possible. I think there are a lot of people who got burned by them feel betrayed by them and are not likely to, to go back, uh, at least not full bore like they were before they left. Uh, so, yeah, I, you know. So what, they, keep, what sure keeps you attached to them? Because I know you've been doing this for, you've been following them for a long time, covering them a long time. Yeah, I've been following them for over 30 years. Um, and, you know, at first I stayed with them because, you know, my partner Garrett and I had built the, the podcast. Yeah. I write about them for bolts from the blue. So yeah. at first there was some, you know, I'll be honest, there, there were some mixed feelings about whether or not I wanted to stay with the team. And we, I kept doing it because we had built this thing with the podcast that was tangible and that we wanted to hang on to and we loved doing. So we stayed with them for that. And I think, you know, getting back into it and, you know, really pouring myself into that, I kind of rediscovered that love for them. So now I'm, That's great. you know, yeah, I'm 100% a fan again. I was kind of <laughs> in the middle there for a little while, but it, it's, it's coming back. All right, man. So once again, you know, thank you for taking some time to speak with us. You brought a lot of great stuff. So why don't you go ahead and plug, you know, your, your podcast and your social channels and where people can find more, Chargers content from you. Yeah, so uh, again, my name is Jamie Hoyle. I'm one of the co-hosts for the Lightning Round podcast. We do a weekly show during the regular season where we recap games, talk about you know news stories, things like that. You can, and uh, we also have a Twitter handle where we I, I interact with fans, and you can find us at at Lightning underscore Round. Uh, I handle that account, so if you're talking to the Lightning Round account, you're talking to me. Mm -hmm. um, Good to know. I also write for what's that? Good to know. Yeah, that that that's all me. Um, <laughs> I also write for Bolts from the Blue um, occasionally, and you can find me there. Uh, my I also have a personal Twitter handle which I use on occasion, which is at Hoyle Sports at H O Y L E Sports. And yeah, that's that's how you can find me. I'm always around. I'm always talking to fans, talking Chargers. And if you haven't listened to the podcast, please do. I think we'll be happy. We have a lot of good content. We put a lot of work into it. And we're very proud of our product. Awesome, Jamie. Thanks again for joining us. You have a good night and keep up the great work. Thank you guys very much for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, hopefully we can do it again. Yes, sir. Likewise. All right, guys. Have a good night. You too. All right. Thanks again. Bye-bye. So that was J Jamie from the Lightning Round Podcast and Boats from Blue. Shout out to him. Chargers. We don't ever talk to Chargers, so it's nice to actually find someone who actually knows about the Chargers. I like how you said how can they get love back in San Diego when they're in Carson. They can't even get love from Cal State Dominguez Hills. Come on. Oh, uh, you're foul. <laughs> <laughs> Not wrong, but foul. <laughs> Mikhail's ears poked right up when I said, how do they get better than the Chargers? And the Chiefs. 
they won't. That's all I gotta tell you. Guys. <laughs> he, he literally said that like ten times. Yeah, <laughs> it will not trigger. <laughs> hey, shout out my guy Rob Parker. FS uh, one. His his favorite saying is "No way, no how." That's exactly how they're going to get better than the Chiefs. It just, I just think, man, if you don't have Melvin Gordon and you don't have your best defensive player in Derwin James, of course they have the pass rushes on the side. They, like he said, the linebackers have improved. Uh, the corner play is not too bad. But, man, Derwin James was like he was a perfect guy to, to guard Kelsey. You know what I'm saying? And their tackles are trash. Yeah, and their tackles. Do they still have Corey? Uh, Barksdale, I think. No, they don't have Barksdale. They don't have Barksdale anymore? No, I'm not sure. Yeah, and it's – God. I just don't – I don't know if Phillip Rivers can repeat the performance he did last year. Like, I really think – 32 and 12? Yeah. All right, so now it's time to move to the NFC West, beginning with everybody's favorite team. L.A. Rams. Boo. Yeah, rambling. Hello, caller. What is your name and where are you calling from? This is Mr. Bear Motter calling from Los Angeles. How we doing, boys? Good. How are you doing, man? So so why don't you go ahead and give us an introduction on, on Locked On Rams and tell people what, what that's all about. Yes, sir. So Locked On Rams is a daily Los Angeles Rams podcast, so five days a week. Monday through Friday, we're breaking it down. Uh, it's finally in that good, awesome part of the season where we're actually talking about football. We did a lot of top ten lists, a lot of free agent talk, a lot of opinion, 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 and now here we are getting <laughs> into the good stuff. So uh, we've got a bunch of stuff to talk about, and we do it every single day, my man. All right, Brad. So let, let, let's get right into it. First of all, what, what made you into a Rams fan? Because I know you're also a Cubs fan, so I just wanted to know – <laughs> that seems like an awkward marriage to me. It is an awkward marriage. And, you know, I appreciate a lot of these awkward sports marriages as I follow around on Twitter and I see, like, Mets fans that are Rams fans and, <laughs> you know, all these things. It, it makes me feel not as weird. But I grew up in the Chicago area, and my, my first passion uh, was University of Michigan football. Right behind that, before I could walk, was Chicago Cubs baseball. And along the way, I was a Bears fan as well uh, growing up in the Midwest. But I spent about three and a half years over in Australia, and I kind of lost my sports NFL fandom. There was the Jay Cutler days, the very dark days. Yeah. I kind of really just stopped paying attention and became a fan of <laughs> players around the league and, and, and things like that. And when I came back, I moved to Los Angeles the exact same day. I was sitting in the airport <laughs> having a beer, and they say the Los Angeles Rams or the St. Louis Rams are moving to Los Angeles. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. Like, I'm moving to a city that didn't have a team, and now they do. And one of my best friends in life has been trying to pitch a podcast on me for years. But he's always like, you want to do health and fitness? And I'm like, no way. I'm, <laughs> like, if you know who I am, I'm not a health and fitness type of guy. Like, I would maybe do a podcast about, like, double stuff Oreos, but not health and fitness. So, uh, finally, he's like, I know you're a fiend about <clears throat> football these days. So, uh, he kind of roped me in on doing it with the Los Angeles Rams. And when you start to cover a team constantly, and we went through the Jeff Fisher days, and you, you see them struggle with four wins, and, and then you get the f- number one draft pick, and, and you're writing notes, and you're watching them left and right, you kind of become committed. And then once I got the opportunity to do Lockdown Rams, you're doing it five days a week now, uh, it kind of just became one of these things where I was so invested in them that I kind of became this newly – LA fan. I kind of joined the, <laughs> the early crowd of the new era of fans in Los Angeles. Hey, at least you're honest about it, though. So, props oh, yeah, to I gotta you. Keep it real. My, my co-host is my, my co-host is <laughs> is also part of the new Rams the coalition. Ramley? You mean the Ramley? <laughs> First the of, Ramley, baby. There I was a Rams fan <laughs> dating back to when they were in St. Louis. I always liked them, but I was born in East Oakland and was a Raiders fan my whole life. But you know, so so Brad, we play this game. It's called touchdown or turnover. It's really simple. Touchdown is good. Turnover is bad. So I'm gonna give you a statement related to the Rams, and you can tell me if it's a touchdown or if it's a turnover, and like it. a brief explanation why. So, you know, these are gonna be kind of obvious, but yeah. So Tyler Higby got a four year, thirty one million dollar extension. Is that a touchdown or a turnover for the Rams? Uh, you're starting it off pretty difficult here. But I, <laughs> say, I mean, my my heart, my initial reaction says turnover. Yeah. But the more I look into it and see what Sean McVay has done, I almost he's, he's got to this point where he's got to make a big error for me to, to call anything a turnover at this point because he's done so well with building people that he thinks are good football players that he thinks fit into the we, not me, that they always run with. So. I initially, when I saw it, I said turnover right away because I'm thinking Tyler Higby. I looked up the stats. He was 
34th in receptions last year. He was like 37th in yards. He was like 42nd in touchdowns. Like, what are we paying this man? But I realize you locked up your quarterback. They've got a good rapport. He's done pretty – he's done – 